So I keep remembering that there was people telling me you don't know who you are. It's kind of like everything that I would say, I would get challenged by somebody would walk by and challenge what I thought I like knew. Right. Right. I understand. Well, it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will find the right school of spirituality for you. And it seems like slowly, slowly you're coming. You, you have to, everyone has to find in that moment in their lives what teachings is really working for them and what they're, they resonate with. This one. As well as trusting your intuition because... You know, it's interesting, I'm going to tell you the story, is when I landed in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh in India, and I landed at the feet of my Satguru, Punjaji, we called him Papaji. And I was so naive, and uh, I really didn't know anything. Yet, I mean, I knew things, but... But it was a blessing because I didn't, I only wandered around the spiritual market for, for two, three years of going into these other places. I checked the Islamic Sufism, uh, a little, some Buddhism, some different things. And... Uh, hold on a second. Okay. And I was fishing in spiritual market. So, and nothing was really resonating with me. Everything kind of was kind of confusing. And especially the, uh, different uh, ideology or schools that they were talking about, I need to be a vegetarian and I have to give up sex. And it was like, okay, maybe I can give up being vegetarian, but I, I don't know about giving up sex to get to God. There has to be another way to get to God. And then there were all these different things, like I was drawn to Osho, and there was all these meditations like dynamic or kundalini. You had to get up at 6 in the morning or 5 in the morning to be able to go to the ashram and do these uh, uh, meditations. And I was like, my God, I'm really not into any kind of discipline. There must be a lazy ways man to enlightenment. So, because I'm not cut out for these kind of disciplines. Definitely not at that time in my life. Of course, things changed. I've become a lot more disciplined. But, or the thoughts, reading books from Ram Das, thinking, okay, I have to go to some monastery in Tibet or in Nepal, and I have to just give up everything and sit in silence in a lotus position for six months it was like it's not my thing and I come across Papaji Punjaji my sad guru and the first day I'm sitting with him the first thing he says there's nothing to do and nowhere to go and I'm like what like what do you mean nothing to do and nowhere to go and he says you're already God and you're already there and you can never be separated from God. Just be quiet. All you have to do is be quiet. And I was like, this is my teacher. I resonate with these teachings. Th this is for me. It wasn't for my friend. It wasn't for my cousin. It wasn't for someone else. That was for me. It was like, I... I this is it. So Advaita Vedanta is the teachings that I'm attracted to and it became the very basis of fifth, 
dimensional quantum awareness, which is very firmly based into silence, means a quiet mind. Of course, it still took years. It wasn't like coming to this teacher at that stage of my my development and the next day you're fully enlightened we do we all got glimpses of the self but it was still a process but i knew i was on the right track still doubts came confusions came i checked into other people's teachings but i wasn't resonating with them so, and I'm not saying that a certain kind of teachings that you are receiving, don't take me wrong, it's all in a moment. So, you may resonate with a tradition or a certain kind of teachings at a period in your life, but don't even have an idea that this is it, because that can change to something else and you get drawn to something else, and that's okay. But it's really good once you find the one teachings or teacher that you really resonate with and then you feel like you're on the right track. Okay, so let's see. I hope I answered a lot of your questions, Tanaz. We are beginning our free online global self-awakening workshop starting on June 20th. So it's going to be on a weekend, June 20th and 21st, then June 24th and 25th, and June 27th and 28th. The workshop is going to begin at 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning uh, California time. Pacific Standard Time, which is going to be 18.30 to 20.30 European Time. And if you're in New York City, then you know that our time difference is three hours, and you guys are three hours uh, ahead of us. Um, so the dates are set. I'm excited to tell you. We're sending out our emails uh, today. We had to solve a lot of technical issues we had, so everything is ready to go. Um, feel free to invite friends. If you would like to have direct interaction with me, then you would need to come through Zoom. Uh, we're broadcasting simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. So, but. I can't communicate with anybody on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, it's too much for me. So our communication is going to be on Zoom. So if you want to have direct communication with me, then come on our system, the Zoom. Otherwise, you can watch the uh, workshop on YouTube and Facebook live. Anybody has any questions for me? Yeah, I'm on. Hi. Okay, hi. Hi, Hilda. Hi. I have a question to you from Helen. She's in pain right now. Do you have uh, any good recommendations what she can do? Yeah. When... Uh, one of the best ways is that when you have intense pain is that normally we contract, we go into a contraction. 